In the mid-18th century, unrest was brewing in the American colonies, with taxes imposed by the British government slowly rising along with taxes proposed specifically for the colonies. Britain attempted to impose a greater degree of control over the colonies, including attempting to force those living there to pay them for its defence during the French and Indian War. To cut out a metric tonne of context, the American Revolution was almost upon the world. I feel it's an understatement to say colonists felt dissatisfied with British colonialism and mercantilism policies, and then in 1775, the war would begin. Ending eight years later, which would see the eventual formation of the United States of America. A fascinating time in history. In today's video, Aiden has compiled for us a list of five American Revolution facts for me to share with you all, as apparently I must present it so he can go to a festival and get mashed whilst listening to music, and then remember none of it. So here you go, five fascinating American Revolution facts so we can obtain some knowledge together. Fact 1. America's Master Baker as known, managing the supplies needed to maintain a war effort during major conflicts can become a serious issue for those who are in command of the troops and resources. This was no different in the American Revolution, where following the winter of 1777, the food supplies of the Patriots were dwindling. However, General George Washington enlisted the help of Christopher Ludwig, who kindly donated his services to the side of the colonies, fighting against the British. Following the acceptance of his services, Ludwig was appointed Director of Baking, or Baker General, by Congress. The deal they had come to was that for every £100 of flour he received, he would provide the army with £135 of bread in return. This agreement carried on for the next five years of the war. Another notable point is the fact that as well as managing creating all of the bread for the army, Ludwig also managed his own flour shipments, the delivery of the bread he produced to the soldiers, and also built his own ovens to help create the large amounts of bread. Fact 2. The Culper Spy Ring Organised by Major Benjamin Talmadge, and General George Washington, the Culper Ring was a network of spies active during the War of Independence. Created during the British occupation of New York City, Washington would often direct the operations of the spy ring, whilst Talmadge would act as the spies' direct contact for any intelligence they might gather. The main task given to the spies who were a part of the Culper Ring was to provide information on Loyalist Army operations in New York City, Long Island and Connecticut until the British evacuation of New York in 1783. Some information, which was supplied by the spies of the Culper Ring, detailed the surprise attack from the French forces being led by Lieutenant General Rochambeau at Newport, Rhode Island as well as a British plot to start counterfeiting American currency on the same paper that was being used for continental dollars. As a result, Congress retired the bills from circulation in order to prevent hyperinflation. Much more information would be discovered by the Culper Ring in order to aid the Americans' war effort, but that number was simply too great to mention all in one concise point. But I think it's fair to say that were it not for this intelligence operation, the American Revolution could certainly have turned out differently. Fact 3. The End of the War The Peace of Paris took place in 1783, also known as the Treaty of Versailles, not to be confused with the slightly more well-known Treaty of Versailles signed in 1919 following the end of the First World War. On the 3rd of September 1783, representatives of King George III of Great Britain signed a treaty with representatives from the United States of America. The main terms of the treaty dictated that Britain would lose 13 colonies in the US and would also lead to the end of the First British Empire. As well as this, the US gained more land than they had originally expected due to the award of some of the Western territories. However, not all states which fought alongside the Americans were happy with the outcome of the treaty. As an example, the French, who although they were able to get revenge on Britain for their loss in the Seven Years' War, the material gains they were given were quite low. This was a considerable issue for the French, as they were still at this point in financial trouble due to having to borrow currency to pay for the war, which could have led to the financial troubles the French were going to experience throughout the rest of the 1780s, and that may very well have contributed to the start of the French Revolution in 1789. 
Fact number four, the world's first submarine attack. Although the world's first submarine was created by Dutch inventor Cornelius Riebel in the, I've probably pronounced that horribly wrong, in the early 17th century, it wasn't until the American Revolution where a submarine would be used in naval conflict. The American's iteration of a submarine was known as the Turtle, created and crafted by David Bushnell in 1775. Rather than more traditional ideas of submarines, where they would be equipped with torpedoes and other weapons, the main use of the Turtle was going to be for attaching explosives to the underside of ships to be able to stop a British naval blockade. Bushnell had done research into underwater explosives while he was at Yale College, and by early 1775 the method had been created by using a musket firing mechanism which was connected to a clockwork. The end result being a time bomb. On the 6th of September 1776, Sergeant Ezra Lee piloted the turtle towards Admiral Richard Howe's flagship, the HMS Eagle, which was moored just off of Governor's Island. Setting off around 11pm, it took Lee two hours to reach the anchorage due to the slow moving speed of around 3 miles per hour, living up to its name the Turtle I see. However, the plan was a failure, with the strong current plus the low visibility, it was extremely difficult. Along with this, Lee had only 20 minutes of air in the sub. Then, adding the issue of once reaching the ship and lighting the fuse, Lee was unable to stab the explosive device into the underside of the ship, which led him to having to abandon due to fear of being caught with the device about to explode. One month later, Sergeant Lee attempted to attach an explosive charge to a frigate, which was anchored just off of Manhattan. However, on this attempt, it is reported that the ship he was attempting to destroy spotted him and he abandoned this attempt too. It said the turtle sank a few days later, while there are reports that Bushnell managed to salvage it, its ultimate fate has faded into history. Fact number five, British soldiers acting antics. Whilst occupying New York City, Boston and Philadelphia, the British army used their time as the invading power to start establishing theatres, led by three men, General John Burgoyne in Boston, General William Howe in Philadelphia, and General Henry Clinton in New York each managing a theatre. One of the most famous men to come from this was Major John Andre, who was active in both New York and Philadelphia. However, research has found that his activities in Philadelphia was painting an extensive backdrop for the stage which ended up outliving him. When he was executed by the Continental Army, but the backdrop stayed in the Suffolk Theatre until it was burnt down in 1821. These performances were mainly of political nature, acting as a form of propaganda. One of the most famed ones was Burgoyne creating a show called The Boston Blockade, in which George Washington was portrayed as an uncouth figure, awkward in gait, wearing a large wig and a rusty sword. From this, it suggests the British were aiming to show the Americans who called these cities home that their revolutionary leader was a moron. And that brings us to the end of five fascinating American Revolution facts. Thank you all for watching, we really hope that you've enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends, all that wonderful stuff. It would really go a long way in helping us get this channel out there so that we can finally get monetized and then we don't have to battle with the YouTube algorithm quite as hard, although I'm sure that battle will be as long as time itself. So even if you share the channel with just one friend, it'll go a long way in aiding us in our quest to fulfill this little dream of ours. Thank you all for watching, we will see you all very soon, but until next time please take care and goodbye.